Hello and uh, welcome to the June presentation of uh, Port Manager Behind the Scenes. Uh, in this presentation I'll talk about Port Manager, uh, its history, the technical aspects, uh, a bunch of people aspects because Port Manager is about people too, and finally Q&A, closing thoughts, etc. So, uh, in short, Port Manager is a team responsible for overseeing the overall direction of the port stream, building packages and personal managers. And specifically, it's not that it owns all of uh, the MK directory inside the port stream, which we might come to later, and uh, that it sets policies unilaterally. So, uh, well, first a small video about how the port stream grew over time. It, it's currently at 40,000 or so ports. So, yeah, it started back in 94 by Jordan Hubbard. Ah, uh, with just 27 committers. <laughs> we now have something to 200 uh, for ports alone. I'm not sure the numbers. Uh, and I think about 400 people that are committed overall. So in 20 years ago we were already at 10,000 ports. Yeah. Ah, so now it's a full tree. So the yeah, the code stagnates a bit. So Frederick Zelo, he was a port manager secretary for some years before I became the secretary. Okay, so back to the presentation. Uh, why was port manager created? Uh, from Kino Ponomaya, he said uh, he was a port manager a long time ago. Uh, so the idea was to create packages for all releases on uh, a system called Tinderbox, which you'll come to later, uh, and also to support and maintain uh, a tool package and its predecessor uh, that you can use to actually install packages that are built from ports and test all critical changes in the MK directory before the, those are committed. Because uh, that's the center directory that affects uh, many or all ports. Uh, so Tinderbox, that was a package build tool with an in PHP uh, before its successor, Bootyard, uh, which is written in Shell, uh, uh, came live. And it was run decentralized on hardware managed by various volunteers. In contrast to the Boudier tool, which is run inside the FreeBSD cluster. And so that also had the effect that uh, if a hard disk of someone's, somebody uh, gave up, then there might the finished stagnation in the building speed or packages might have gone lost or something. Ah, oh. Uh, in the beginning, was, uh, like the rest of the FreeBSD source code was kept in CVS, which is a concurrent versioning system and a predecessor of subversion, which he fused until uh, last year. Those are both uh, 
centralized uh, version systems in contrast to Git, what we use currently. Uh, and because of CVS and uh, the way the package builds were managed and other policy things, uh, the trust sometimes necessary to just lock the entire tree so uh, nobody could actually uh, make a CVS commit, uh, which typically happened on GNOME updates. Uh, there were also no quarterly branches, so that was just uh, what we now call the main branch. And if something broke, then it broke for everybody. <laughs> and there were also no public pre-built packages, uh, except at the time of a free, new FreeBSD release. And if you wanted to update, you had to build them yourself. Mm -hmm your local cluster or your local machine or something just by pulling in the new sources and building a tool like a port operator or port master. And there was no uh, licensing framework, so no uh, the, the, the licensing framework it describes uh, how which ports uh, for all the which licenses and so you might or might not want to use certain ports because of its license. Uh, and also for ports themselves, uh, there was no staging support, which means that uh, before a package is built for a port, uh, during build time, so after it's the, the code is compiled and it uh, gets installed into a staging directory, and then uh, the, the port building framework can uh, look at what files uh, get installed and uh, check if everything is uh, installed properly, and also actually have a track record of those files. So, uh, so we don't just install something on your system and just hope it uh, doesn't uh, damage something else. Like with the bear, what the bear make install would do. Uh, there were no users, uh, which is a, a, a keyword. It's a keyword and also a mechanism in the for ports to uh, specify uh, dependencies in a more uh, declarative way. So uh, if a port uh, once installs a kernel module, you can just write uses as kmod and then it, the port framework uh, by virtue of that uh, makes slash uses slash kmod.mk uh, uh, add some boilerplate to the port to check if you have the kernel source directory installed and tells you uh, if it isn't there or set some compiler flags or it could also uh, add uh, runtime or build dependencies or, or anything you just want to hide in there. Uh, ports had no flavors uh, which uh, flavors are variations of the same port uh, still inside FreeBSD, uh, typically those get used for uh, A4, A4 versus ladder format, or uh, if you have a, a port that handles printing, like some office port, or if you want a uh, film with all the options installed or just uh, something or resembling VI or you want to build a port against a certain Python package uh, version like 3.8 or 3.11. Uh, flavors actually don't combine, so you cannot have a E4 Python 3.11 combination. Uh, 
So you have only one flavor per board. And then you have to make supports for the others. Or something. Um, yeah, and boards make files tend to be very imperative at the, when they started out. And they're now much more declarative. So, uh, also because of uses, or, uh, because we tend to write more of the imperative things inside the framework. Uh, like, uh, there's some install target that uh, actually looks over a bunch of directories and does all things it finds and you just say use that target and all that keywords and you don't have to think of it yourself. Um, so, board matches. Also technical, of course. Uh, the policy making part is controlled uh, by the core team, which we'll discuss uh, in a later slide. Uh, this is charter here that you can read, which has actually uh, so the charter, the, the, the contents of the charter is controlled by the core team and changes have to be approved by them. And uh, so the, the charter, uh, I can distill a set of policies from it, which you can read upon at this page. And um, so for some difficult things at Port Manager, uh, deals with our uh, package building which you discussed before, uh, documentation, like uh, the Porter's Handbook is an, one example. And that's actually in the, in the doc repository, so any documenter can also write to it. Uh, like fix uh, things, uh, mistakes, or add something new, or remove old stuff, or whatever. Uh, Security is something uh, we used to have the port sec team, which should still be active, which is all the dormant now, uh, which uh, that team uh, for maintenance of our security problems or at the uh, security notices, uh, things like that. Uh, legal aspects, those are fortunately a very rare. I do remember one case myself about uh, uh, some ports and mm, it wasn't fun. Uh, that typically those legal aspects are also typically handled by in combination with core. Um, well, then we also of see the overall direction of the poetry as mentioned at the start of this presentation and uh, uh, yeah. deal with uh, committers or contributors disagreeing with each other which also fortunately doesn't happen too often. Uh, so board match is also responsible for building packages. Uh, those are now automated tasks in the package building cluster, which is part of the larger FreeBSD cluster uh, for the main and quarterly branches. So main is the, the main branch is uh, similar to FreeBSD current for uh, the source tree. It's where all development happens. And then each quarter we split off a, a new branch, and uh, which is mostly for bug fixes and security fixes and those things. Uh, so packages get built for the main and quarterly branches for all supported FreeBSD releases. 
for the Java one and Java two architectures, uh, which are typically the uh, architectures where you can have a free BSD update uh, for. And yeah, there, there are some more uh, technical definitions about the, the difference between those two. There's also chair three, which is mostly best efforts, and a tier four, which means you're on your own. Uh, and these packages are built multiple times a week, typically at uh, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday at 1 a.m. UTC. Um, no. So I'm obviously not the only one in Port Manager. Uh, we have a bunch day. No. Currently we have Antoine Brodin. Uh, he's responsible for package building and package cluster configuration and also for experimental events so if uh, people want a new autoconf in uh, they typically send in a, a request for i have this autoconf patch and uh, does, it, uh, does it break the entire port tree and uh, if it does uh, you get to fix your things <laughs> and if not you can commit uh, Baptista Roussin is uh, one of the main authors of the package tool, the, the modern one, which is actually a port and not <laughs> a part of the base system. Uh, he deals with the framework and is the current core liaison. And Brian Drury, who is also responsible for building packages, is uh, one of the main maintainers of the Poudier package building tool and the uh, liaison for the release engineering team. Mathieu Arnold who also deals with ports framework and uh, documentation like the ports handbook and the liaison for cluster administration team. Uh, Nela Dan, that's me. I'm the secretary uh, thing with them all. So I write the Monty reports uh, for the FreeBSD developers. And uh, the got the reports which get sent out in the public. Got the reports to the uh, a tool to uh, see which committers haven't committed for a while. And, uh, then I take in commit bits of inactive committers and I, then I'm not by my port manager as I typically I garbage collect all the ports and clean up things in the framework or other ports and uh, Steve Wills he does all kind of things uh, Tobias Berner is uh, also does some framework things and also so uh, human resources person and then we have two trainees and Luca Pizza Miglio and Stefan Esser uh, that they joined I think like two months ago now and uh, so they they pick up all kind of things uh, too. Um, also, uh, force uh, to have uh, new insights and new energy. Um, well, that's a large list of alumni, uh, which you can view here at the alumni page. Um, so, from the previous slide, it um, became 
clear that we also deal, uh, interact with other teams. Uh, one is the accounts team, uh, which is tip which get typically involved uh, when new uh, post commits or uh, get get a commit bit or an uh, existing post commits retire. Uh, they they do the same for token source commits. Uh, the cluster administration team, uh, which deals with the uh, 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 the cluster hardware, uh, uh, so they also provide us with package building machines. The release engineering team, which uh, we communicate with uh, at the time of previous team releases to um, Uh, to, to, to get the uh, new packages uh, out for the release and although that's mostly an automated process now uh, well the core team for the to notify them about new or retiring committers and also for um, well, so the core team it's a group of FreeBSD developers elected by yearly by active FreeBSD developers. They are the internal representation of the FreeBSD project and communicate both uh, upwards with the FreeBSD foundation and downwards with dedicated teams such as board manager. Uh, yeah, so so that that basically means they are. They're dealing with all the things that uh, a lot of people think because well they are at the center of it. Um, so back to port manager. Uh, the personal handling part that's consists mostly of uh, voting on new committers and their mentors. Uh, so any any uh developer can who's already a committer and uh, finished their mentorship can propose a new uh, committer. Uh typically say ah the this person is very enthusiastic and see this long list of patches and um, uh, or community interaction or whatever and uh are they I can mail to board manager and uh, you'd vote upon that proposal and typically get back here uh, within a week. And as long as nobody uh, votes no, it should be fine. Uh, well, the negative votes they only have an occasion and. Uh, yeah. Uh, so another thing is to um, save keep, which is a bit of uh, internal uh, uh, internal wording for uh, uh, so uh, to to. The idea was that you have a kind of a fault where you can put literally put a commit bit in and that's that's the save. <laughs> so it's an old joke. Uh, yeah. So you, you basically uh, uh, the, the safekeeping I commit is just, what it does is that uh, you, you remove uh, the right access uh, to git for those people because they haven't committed in over a year or uh, uh, as, a, as a security precaution and well by the time you would commit again uh, things in the board team might have changed enough that you would need to cut up the speed again a bit so. 
But yeah, you can always ask for a look at your catcher that commit bit back from the safe and continue your work. Uh, which is the last point. Uh, well, not only regular committers. Uh, 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 uh. So, so port manager itself also uh, has a rollover um, so people retire or they, they might still be, be a regular force committer but it's not port manager or maybe not at all yeah it just depends uh, and we also uh, Ask new people to join and then throw in these workers. Uh, which is the other who is who slide. Uh, so, of course, board manager is not perfect. Uh, we need to realize that communication could be better with the communication with perhaps the outside world and also communication within FreeBSD uh, previous uh, instance of Force Manager and most have tried some social media like Twitter or Facebook uh, but that turns out to be just a lot of extra work um, oh yeah we kind of stopped there uh, another idea is to uh, Play off board manage into some new teams like uh, the package manage team which is actually on the agenda for board manager to do soon uh, the, the, the so uh, roughly the idea is that that package manager would be responsible for building and distributing packages and uh, keeping the board stream in such a shape that it can build packages and port manager would be more of uh, managing and uh, kind of body. Uh, from this year we started to uh, buy weekly meetings uh, uh, in which we discuss all kind of topics uh, like uh, current affairs or uh, design decisions um, sometimes the outcome are public and sometimes they're well just more private because they deal with personnel matters uh, one example uh, was that uh, the decision to not have every port that's indirectly dependent on Python 2.7 which uh, so the, the Python 2.7 port uh, expired in 2020 because uh, upstream support ended and all ports including ports that would indirectly use Python 2.7 uh, would um, if you marked this defecated and scheduled for removal and it turned out that a lot of these ports uh, yeah it is uh, more a victim than at fault and it just caused a lot of confusion over time and so so we moved that uh, so that's that's a public example <laughs> uh, So now it's up to you. If there are any questions, I would be happy to uh, answer them. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>